Hello, welcome to this tutorial on Microsoft Access, a powerful database management system that allows you to easily collect, manage, and analyze data. It is based on the SQL language and is often used in finance, human resources, and other industries professionally. In this video, we'll explore the basics of Access in only 12 minutes and learn how to use it from scratch with the powerful support of ChatGPT on SQL and VBA coding. As you open Access, the startup page opens. On the left, open and browse for existing Access database files. While on the right, you can find your latest documents and ready-to-use templates to start from. Let's simply pick a blank database, defining file name and destination folder, and then clicking on Create. The new project opens on the main workspace, with a ribbon on top, with various tools you can use. The navigation pane on the left showing the different objects composing your database and the main preview where to work and edit objects. You can also change the interface theme by going to File, Account, Office Theme. The Access database is made of several types of objects, such as tables, queries, forms, reports, and macros. Let's start creating a table. Tables are used to collect and store data, generating the database. Each single data, such as a single person or measurement, is a row called record, identified by a unique ID number or primary key. Tables also consist of several columns called fields, which describe different kinds of data saved per each record. Any new document starts with an empty table called Table 1. Define its fields one by one by clicking on Click to Add. Select the data format and the field name. Choose short text for text up to 255 characters, long text up to 64,000 characters, number for numbers, currency to manage currencies, date and time to get the calendar and fix any date. Yes, no to add a Boolean status you can click on. Attachment to add a file by double clicking on its icon. Or hyperlink to add an online or local link by right clicking on it and selecting hyperlink. Fill the table by double-clicking on any cell. If this falls on a new row, a new record is automatically created, increasing the ID number on the left and building your database table. You can also go to External Data, New Data Source to import data from external files made with Excel, Access, any SQL server, or SharePoint with a guided procedure you can follow step-by-step. You can also process data with math expressions and operations with the calculated fields. When defining the data type of any field, go to Calculated Field and select the Input Data Type. In the Expression Builder dialog, you can type directly the arguments and operations or build the expression step-by-step -step at the bottom, selecting the object under Elements such as Table 1 and then choose the right field to take under Categories. Double-click on Value on the right to add the field value as an argument. At this point, select Functions or Operators under Elements to make the expression according to the field data type. You can get hints on the correct syntax at the bottom. Or go to Help to get more information on the current expression value selected. Click on OK to perform the expression and obtain the result. This gets updated if its inputs change. Now let's see how to manage this table. Right-click on a field name to edit its expression, rename, or delete it. You can also select it and drag it to change its position in the table. On Table Fields, you can change the data type for the selected field and set a default value with the Expression Builder. You can also select any record and right-click on it to delete it. This will also delete its ID key permanently. As you start collecting lots of data, you can go to Home, Filter, to show or hide records based on the value selected for each field. To edit the text used in your table, go to Home and click within Text Formatting to set text format, size, style, and color. In the bottom right corner, you can change the kind of preview over the table. The default one just seen is the datasheet view, 
but you can switch to Design View to manage the field properties, such as data type, format, or set any field mandatory or not with required. To make another table, go to Create, Table, and right-click on its tab to save and close it. This new table shows up on the navigation pane on the left, from which you can double-click on it to reopen it, and right-click on it to rename or delete it. Forms are pages that allow users to enter data into a database without editing it directly or knowing SQL. To create a form, open the Interested Table database and go to the Create tab, Form. The form gets the same table fields and one page per each record as you can check at the bottom. Switch to Form View to interact with the form, such as filling its last page to add a new record on the table. Make sure to save the form to get the new data added. Whereas open the Layout view to change the structure of the form, such as its field rows and elements, with the Controls section above. Enable the Select tool and click and drag any element to move it and drag from its edges to resize it. Right-click on any element to remove it and open the Property Sheet panel to adjust the element properties. With the other tools, you can add text boxes, labels, or buttons. For example, you can add a button to go back to the first record of the table. To manage the rows and columns of the form, open the Arrange section. On Form Layout, Themes, you can pick ready templates for the form's appearance to customize its style and color. Switch to Design View to preview the form as a website page, complete with header and footer. Queries allow you to retrieve data from one or multiple tables and compile them into a new query database table. To create a new query, go to Create and select Query Design. On the right-hand side, Select one or more tables to take data from by holding down the control or command key. If you don't see this panel, just go to Query Design and select Add Tables. These tables appear with their name and fields above, and at the bottom, you build the query table, defining one field per column. On Fields, select the table and its fields separated by a dot. You can also select all the table fields with the asterisk. Check on the results of your query by switching to the Datasheet view. You can also collect data that respects specific conditions. Right-click on Criteria and go to Build to insert expressions with the Expression Builder. For example, collecting any data record if this shows a field value over a certain threshold. You can also build your query with SQL language and get support from ChatGPT. Switch to SQL view and ask ChatGPT to provide an SQL code that meets your query specifications. Make sure to give precise instructions and separate names of tables and fields with quotes to avoid misunderstandings. After that, copy and paste the code in the SQL view. Switch to Datasheet view to see the result. And debug the query using the Design view. To generate a report in Microsoft Access, you can open any table or query in Datasheet view, and then go to Create, Report. Select the Layout view to edit it with the Control section, Arrange, and Format tabs as seen for the forms. If you want to export or print the report, make sure to go to Page Setup and set the page size, margins, and orientation according to the position of the dashed lines that represent the page borders. You can preview the report by going to Print Preview, and then print it with the Print option in the top left corner. In Access, you can also execute scripts to automate functions and actions in your databases. Build a macro by going to Create, Macro, and select from several functions available using a Visual Basic or VBA language such as Open Query to open a specific query. At this point, save the macro and test it by clicking on Run under Macro Design. 
From the navigation pane, you can double-click on the macro to execute it. And right-click on it and go to Design View to edit it. ChatGPT is really helpful when making macros. While building any macro, go to Convert Macros to Visual Basic to extract its VBA code as a module on the left. Double-click on it to show its code, which you can copy and paste into ChatGPT. At this point, you can ask ChatGPT to start from this code and add lines according to your instructions. Make sure to mention that the code is already linked to the current database. Copy the new lines into your Visual Basic code, and then save and run it on Access. ChatGPT can be helpful, but a basic knowledge on Visual Basic is recommended to interpret the code and add the lines you really need case by case. To save your work, go to File, and then to Save As. Choose Save Database As to save all your Access objects, including macros and modules, in a .accdb file whereas select Save Object As to save just the current access object shown on the preview. To export data, open the External Data tab. To export as a .xlsx file, a text file, PDF, or a SharePoint list. The SharePoint list is the best option if you want to upload your database online. Thank you very much for watching this tutorial. Make sure to visit our YouTube channel and catch our website for more outstanding tips and tricks completely for free.